This tutorial is going to expand on adding walls and show you how to add windows and doors. Similarly to the walls that we looked at in the previous tutorial, we have door and window options when we click on that tool that are already built into Revit. What is different with the doors and windows is that we can add more families or different elements in the door and window family as opposed to walls, but we can also edit them. First, let's go look and see what kind of options we have when we load a family. So we can either stay in the door tool and go to load family that way, or we can hit escape and get out of the door tool and go to insert and load family. The difference with that is if we go through insert, then it's not going to bring it in directly through the door tool. We then have to get out of insert and go back to the door tool. My preference is to go directly through the door or the window tool because then once I bring that family element in, it's ready to go. So I selected the door tool again. I'm going to the load family item in that. And now I have got the built-in library for Revit. If you don't see this library, then this is an issue with how your Revit was installed. If that's the case, please contact your professor and she can help you work through that issue. If you do have the library, then we want to go down to the doors folder, double click, and here you see we have some basic options. We don't want to double click, but we want to single click and it starts to give us a view of what it looks like. We're going to go to the residential folder because that's the project that I have open right now. And again, I want to look at the different door options and pick something that I feel is appropriate. Some of these are more interior, right? They say interior. Some of them are exterior. And they again will have properties that relate to interior versus exterior doors with insulation, finishes like wood or metal, different types of glass. And that again helps construction students with their quantity takeoffs and estimates, as well as helping you with aesthetics when you're looking at these different elements. I'm going to pick an exterior door. I'm going to pick something like this because it looks similar to what is existing on this project. And now it gives me different options. So I also need to know the size of the door. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to pick something based on the size of the door that I know it is. At this point I'm having to guess because I don't remember. Interior residential doors and exterior residential doors tend to be 6 foot 8 by um, default. Sometimes they're a little taller, but we always want to measure first. I'm pretty sure that it is a 30 inch wide, 6 foot 8 inch high door, so I'm going to select that item. And now it's loaded into the project, and I'm going to put that exterior door here. You notice it's actually a little bit small, so I got that wrong, but as I hover over the space, it can go inside and outside. I can also use the space bar again to flip it back and forth based on the side that I have it on. But since it's swinging inside, I'm going to make sure that I have it flipped using the space bar, and I'm going to place it. Another way I can make it reoriented is by selecting the door and you notice there are these little arrows. The arrows also can flip it from side to side, both inside and outside. Luckily I have this AutoCAD file that shows me where that door is going to swing, but if you're measuring an existing building you're going to want to make note of those different items. Now I can go look at that door in 3D and see that it has been inserted in that wall. And we can also click on that door and we can go look at the properties. So if we hit edit type like we did before with the wall, it gives us information about materials so that we can adjust those if we would like to, but remember if we change anything we want to duplicate it first and rename it to something that we remember is different. We also in the preview see this dotted line which talks about the direction of the swing of the door. You'll also see that on things like casement windows that are going to swing, awning and hopper windows, as well as some kitchen cabinets. So now let's go back to our plan and let's look for a different door. I don't have any interior walls drawn right now, so I'm going to add an interior wall as opposed to the exterior wall that we did earlier, and I'm going to pick the 
4 and 7 eighths partition. Now if I edit type on that one and I go to my structure, it is also metal studs, so I want to duplicate that. And you notice it also says one hour, and that's because it is a one hour fire rated partition. So I'm just going to call this wood stud instead of one hour since this is a residential project and I'm not worried about the fire rating. I'm going to change my coarse scale fill pattern again, so that's a good habit to get into as you're doing those things. And I'm going to change my metal stud layer to that softwood lumber again for consistency. And then I'm going to change the thickness to three and a half inches because it is wood and those are the nominal dimensions, well the actual dimensions of our lumber. So now I have this wall that I can actually put in the space and you notice that I accidentally forgot to deselect wall center line so I need to change that so that I can align it with this corner and now I have this interior wall. It did not poche, so I want to go back and make sure that I get that done so that as I am putting that wall in, from now on I have a pocheed wall. So I'm going to go get a different interior door. So we have the door that we added from the libraries and then we have single flush doors. So I'm going to go for a 30 inch wide by 80 inch high and I'm going to place an interior door. And because we don't have any walls or, sorry, any floors or ceilings or anything yet, I can actually see that door and the new wall that I added in my 3D. So now let's go ahead and add some windows. Very similar process. This house actually has lots of doors as opposed to windows, but it does have a few windows. So similar to our door, I'm going to click on that tool. I've got these options already loaded into Revit. So there are some double hung windows and that's what I have in this project. So if I don't see the size that I have, I can edit type and duplicate it. Typically for windows, it's good to keep it for the size that I know it is. So with this one, I believe this window is 60 inches wide by 72 inches high. And I also want to make sure that I change that in the dimensions. So it's 60 inches wide by 72 inches high, 5 foot by 6 foot. So Revit then adjusts it and I can put it in this wall and there's that window. And just like our doors, we can use the arrow tool and we can switch it. And what this does is it switches where the sill is, which is the exterior part of the wall, versus the stool, which is the interior part of the wall. And that's something we can also look at in elevation. So you notice that it's got trim around it on the outside, but then I can use the space bar in 3D and you notice it's slightly different and this is actually the exterior version for different details but it really is the interior. This is the trim we would see, this is the stool and this is the apron underneath so we put it in correctly the first time. So that is our 3D version. So if I go back to the floor plan and I go back to window I can go and load different window types as well. So I want to go back to my U.S. Imperial folder and that's based on measurements. We still use U.S. Imperial in the United States, not metric. And now I want to scroll down to the Windows folder and I have lots of different options for Windows. So here we've got different parts, but we don't need that. We want the full window. And then of course we want to look at them before we actually put them into the project. So try playing around with windows and doors and adding those to your project and let your professor know if you have any questions.